In this lesson, we're going to look at polynomial operations and the closure property. The closure property just tells us that if we add two real numbers, we're going to get a real number for our sum. Or if we multiply two real numbers, we're going to get a real number for our product. Now let's take a look at this question. We're being given that m of x equals negative 5x cubed minus 2ax squared minus 4bx plus 2 and n of x equals 4x cubed plus 6bx squared minus 6ax plus 1. Now the question is, which expression could be the sum of m of x and n of x, and then why? Since this is a multiple choice question, let's first take a look at our answer choices and see if any of them could easily be eliminated. Let's look at our first terms. Unfortunately, all of the first terms for each answer choice are the same they're all negative x cubed, so nothing could be eliminated based on the first term. Let's take a look at our constant term here. Since m of x has a 2 for the constant term, and n of x has a 1 for the constant term, and there's no unknowns with the constants, then we know that when we add m of x and n of x together, we're going to get 2 plus 1, or 3, for our constant term. That means that option 4 is not possible because we don't have a 3 in our constant term. And option 1 is also not possible because it has a 1 instead of a 3. Now I'm going to go ahead and get these off the screen to give us a little more room as we consider options 2 and options 3. Now we've established that the first terms and the constant terms, or the last terms, are correct for both of these options. So let's focus on the second term, or the quadratic term, the term with the x squared. I'm going to look at option 2 first. For m of x, the term with the x squared is minus 2ax squared. I'm going to write that down here, minus 2ax squared. And we'll add that to n of x's quadratic term, which is plus 6bx squared. And now let's use this a value and this b value and plug them into this expression and see what we get. So that'll give us negative 2 times negative 2x squared plus 6 times 1x squared. And when we simplify this, that'll be a positive 4x squared plus 6x squared, which goes to 10x squared. So that's a positive 10x squared, so so far, option 2 works. We have a negative x cubed plus 10x squared. What we need to check now is the plus 8x, so let's do that here. Let's grab the linear terms of m of x and n of x and put them together. So that's going to be minus 4bx, and then over here we have minus 6ax, so it'll be plus a minus 6ax. If we write that without double signs, that'll give us minus 4bx minus 6ax. And then let's evaluate for this a equals negative 2 and b equals 1. So b equals 1, that gives us negative 4 times 1 times x minus 6 times a is negative 2 times x. When we simplify this, that gives us negative 4x plus 2 sixes or 12x, which gives us an 8x. So here again, option 2 looks perfect. We've got negative x cubed plus 10x squared plus 8x plus 3, which works when a equals negative 2 and b equals 1. Now let's focus on option 3. I'm going to do that over here in this space. So what we're checking is this minus 10x squared. Now for new values of a, we're looking for when a equals 2 and b equals negative 1. Now let's see if this one works. We're going to have, again, a negative 2ax squared plus 6bx squared when we collect the terms from m of x and n of x. So we'll let a equal 2, and that'll give us negative 2 times 2 x squared plus 6 times b equals negative 1 in this case, so negative 1 x squared. When we simplify this, that gives us negative 4 x squared minus 6 x squared, which does give us a negative 10 x squared. So the quadratic term for option 3 works. Now let's take a look at the linear term, the minus 8x, and see if that works. We might have two answers here. We'll use the same combination of linear terms, the minus 4bx from m of x plus negative 6ax from our n of x up here. 
and that's going to give us, when we write it without double signs, negative 4bx minus 6ax, and now we'll substitute a equals 2 and b equals negative 1. So that'll give us negative 4 times negative 1x minus 6 times positive 2x, and that'll simplify to 4x minus 12x, which gives us a negative 8x. And since negative 8x is the linear term we were looking for in option 3, this tells us that we have two correct solutions from the four options we started with. So both of these expressions could be the sum of m of x and n of x. And the reason why is because for the first one, when a equals negative 2 and b equals 1, this sum works. And for option 3, when a equals 2 and b equals negative 1, this sum works. Now you know a bit more about polynomial operations and the closure property. See you next time.